Okay, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi taala wabarakatuh. Hai, apa khabar semua? Sihat ya? Stay home, stay safety, stay healthy. Okay, first thing first, I would like to test whether you can see my voice. Um, in the screen, okay. Okay, can you hear my voice and see the screen now? Okay, yes. Huh? Marsha, Muhammad Kamil, Sheila. Okay, yes. Right, so that means we can start our class now. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is a summary for everything. Okay, so that I will write on the whiteboard. Eh? Okay. So, chapter 4, Financing Conditions and Efficient Market Hypothesis. All right. So, some of the students have replied here. No problem. No problem. Eh? No problem to follow the FB Live class eh? uh, and the changes. Okay. That's good. All right. So, now we move to the chapter 4, Financing Conditions and Efficient Market Hypothesis. Uh, so, I cannot uh, put in a slide a slideshow mode eh? because... Um, when I want to see the other windows, uh, quite difficult for me. Okay, so I uh, show you in this mode. Eh? Okay, financing decisions uh, involve on how much debt and equity to sell, what type of debt and equity to sell, and when to sell them. So in these statements, there are three things, uh, three questions actually. How, what, and when. How much debt and equity eh, to sell by a company? How much ordering shares they want to issue? So there is equity. How much bond they want to issue? There is a debt. What type of debt? So bond. There is many types of bond. There is a convertible bond. There is a straight bond. There is a bond with warrants. Uh, there is a income bond, income debentures, and so on. Equity. Also, there is a uh, preference shares. There is ordinary shares. For preference shares also, there are many. There is a redeemable preference shares. There is a no redeemable and so on. Okay, when to sell them? This is the timing. Uh, so the timing is very important because the company wants to get a uh, profit or wants to get much money uh, from the investors. So the timing is very important whether the equity sell or the debt or the bond or the ventures issued to the investors is it overpriced or underpriced because the overpriced or underpriced situation will give other party some other firm or investors profit okay or returns all right so next um, how to create value through financing decisions uh, so this part actually not very important okay there are two slides here uh, it's not very important. Three slides here. Number one, we can create value through finance, uh, create value through finance initiation by full investors. Okay, full investors means you sell your equity at price above its true value. So, kalau investors, if the investors buy the shares at price above its true value, uh, so let's say the true value, we call it as an intrinsic value. So let's say the true value is five ringgit, but the market, when the investors want to buy, it is at eight ringgit. Uh, so five ringgit. So we want to um, our true value. Okay, our true value is five ringgit. Okay, I wrote I wrote here. Uh, sorry, I write here. Okay. Uh, to explain uh. okay true value of shares true value new we call it as sometimes uh, as the intrinsic value intrinsic value so if the intrinsic value is five ringgit but market market value is eight ringgit is eight ringgit so we see that this is overpriced overpriced Overpriced, that means investor will pay more. Investor will pay more than its true value. 
So we call it as investors is being full. It's being full. So what dia? Bayar lebih than it should be. Okay. So that is the meaning of full investors. So that's why if market are really efficient, okay, really efficient, securities shares should be appropriately priced at all times. Okay. What is the meaning of appropriately priced? It is a means that if market is efficient, the price should be correctly priced. The price should be correctly priced. Okay, you have learned this when you are doing your, when you did your uh, uh, chapter risk and return last time, isn't it? So where you are comparing, um, the, you are comparing the returns on the, returns on the uh, expected return that you compute, then comparing with the required, of, required rate of return as per market for using the CAPM. Uh, capital asset pricing model. This is a model that we are using to calculate returns by um, taking considerations of the beta, which is the beta, which is the uh, tools to measure uh, systematic risk uh, in the market. Okay, in the market. So you can say that CAPM is a market uh, representing the market, and the uh, the the returns that it compute is representing your own shares. Huh? So uh, if that comparisons, uh, if the return similar, the CAPM and the CAPM and your expected return, so we see that the price is correctly priced. Means what? When price is correctly priced, means the price, the return will lay down on the SML. So remember that security market, security market line. Okay, maybe we can, uh, maybe we can show Okay, you can show. Uh, last time, uh, there is a uh, under CAPM. Just to recap, uh, this one. Uh, okay, whatever uh, plotted on the security market line, if it is uh, uh, the return is similar, that means the return, your return, similar with the CAPM return. CAPM return is a required rate of return that we calculate which is take considerations of here, uh, systematic risk, which is the risk in the large market portfolio. So in short, CAPM to represent the market uh, and also the security market line. So who, whatever returns, which is above the security market line, that means return is high, price is low. Okay, price is low means undervalue. So below the security market line, return is low, price is high. So it is overvalued or overpriced. So if the stock is having, okay, if the stock is having this uh, undervalued or underpricing, overvalued or overpricing, so we see that market is inefficient. Market is eff is efficient if the returns similar with the CAPM, which the returns lay down on this security market line. Uh, so maknanya, uh, expected return U is 12%, CAPM record of return also is 12%, then it is correctly priced. Okay, assumption uh, under EMH, normally efficient market securities are appropriately priced at all times means is a correctly priced. And empirical evidence means the research done by the uh, researchers um, shows that it's, normally it's not easy to fool the investors. Eh? Okay, next. Reduce cost, increase subsidies. Also, this one can reduce uh, reduce cost. Mean we can enhance our profit, so that can also increase the value of the shares. Eh? Increase subsidies. Eh? For example, if you able, if the company able to get loan at a lower interest rate. Uh, for example, if the company able to get government loan, which is the interest rates or cost of financing much much lower than the commercial bank. So that means uh, the company is having subsidies. If the government loan charge 4%, the bank charge 9%. So the difference 9% and 4% is considered as a subsidies. Okay. Uh, macam, uh, the analogy is when you having your PTPTN, education loan. So the PTPTN, I think charge only 1%. Okay. 
so which they call it as the administration cost or ujarah ke apa. But if you applying education loan bank rakyat, bank rakyat will charge you 8%. So the 8%, 1%, the difference of the 7% is known as subsidies. So if you able to get 1%, so that will reduce your cost. Huh? So that also can increase the financing, uh, increase the value. Okay, increase the value. Okay, create a new security that's very difficult to um, copy by the other company. Okay, this is our point. Uh, this is our important things. Efficient capital markets. Huh? Efficient capital markets. So what is the meaning of efficient capital market? So this is the one in which stock prices fully reflect available information. So means what? Price and information is very closely related. So this is also to show you how powerful of the information. Okay? How powerful of the information. And then who is uh, who is getting the information first? Uh, all right. Okay. So stock prices fully reflect available information. That means if there is an announcement or new information release, price would immediately adjust to this information. If the good news is being released, let's say the company announced higher dividend, let's say the company announced increase in earnings, okay? Let's say the company announced they are being awarded a project by the government. That is a good news. So should be prices at the market going up, okay? Prices at the market going up. So when prices at the market going up, at the same time, information release, same time, real time, okay? That we see that market is very efficient. Market is very efficient because it reflects, see this word, immediately, okay? Adjust to this information. Similarly, if the bad news is, uh, if the bad news is being released, for example, like company will go to bankruptcy, uh, for example, uh, earnings for the year reduced, for example, like uh, project cancel, okay? Uh, so there is a bad news. Immediately, price should reflect to the information, makes the stock prices at the market drop, drop, okay? So the rise or drop of the prices at the market should be reflected by the information release. No information, the price should not rise or uh, rise or drop. Maksudnya bukanlah price is stagnant. If the price is one ringgit today, um, tak adalah dia mesti one ringgit. So it move but it move at a stable range. Maybe satu ringgit hari ni, sikit sepuluh sen, uh, 1.2 sen, then 1.1. So that is in the stable range. What I mean is reflect to the uh, information announced is if there is a good news, one ringgit today, then it is going up to maybe 3 ringgit. Okay? Maknanya beyond its range. Or if a bad news, 1 ringgit, maybe going down to uh, maybe uh, going down to uh, berapa sen? Huh? 80 cents ke? Ataupun 50 cents ke? Huh? So that means there is a percentage changes uh, dekat situ. Quite a big percentage changes. Okay, market efficiency refers to the precision. Precision means ketepatan in which the market prices securities. Huh? So efficient market may not be perfect market. Huh? Efficient market may be perfect, may not be perfect market or it can be as an imperfect market. Imperfect market. Okay, so what is the efficient market hypothesis? Hypothesis, this is a, uh, in research we call it hypothesis as a statement, as a statement. Alright, statement is pernyataan. For example, I'm giving this. During PKP, all citizens of Malaysia stay at home. That is the statement. That is the statement. During PKP, all citizens of Malaysia stay at home. That is a statement. Okay, this statement must be proven. How to prove? You need to conduct a test. You need to carry out a test. 
So is it true that citizens of Malaysia will stay at home 100%? So we have to conduct a test. How to carry out the test? By maybe by doing observation bersama PDRM and ATM to see when the people going out, what is the purpose of them to go out? Is it allowed? Is it being allowed or is it not allowed? If, uh, let's say, 3% uh, 3 is uh, go out with no proper reasons or with no authorization letter, with no approval letter, that means this group of 3% citizens is violated the uh, violated law or violated already the statements. So that means we can reject the statements because there is a 3% of the citizens of Malaysia not stay at home during the PKP. Itu statement. Okay, for the EMH, what is the statement? Yeah. The statement is 1, 2, 3. Uh, it can be security prices reflect all available information concerning a firm. It can be security prices fully incorporate known information. It can be prices change rapidly to known or novel information. Okay, one, two, three, that brings to the same meaning. That means the stock prices reflected by all information, means the changes in the price is being reflected by the information or the price has been fully incorporated by the information. That means if the good news, price going up. So that means the information fully incorporate to that security price. If there is a bad news, price will going down. So that information is fully incorporated to that security price. Huh? Price change rapidly means price move according to the information. So, so this we call it as a hypothesis. So this hypothesis, we need to prove. Is it true that, is it real or is it we can trust that security prices, stock prices at the market really reflected by the information? Is it true that when uh, good news release, price is going up? When the bad news release, price will going down? So either price will going up or price will going down, okay, when the information release this must be proven. So this must be test. Okay, must be test. So the test is very important to prove the hypothesis, which is saying that security prices reflect by the information is correct. Okay. All right. So another uh, premise of EMH is day-to-day -day price changes follow random walk. Okay, what is a random? Random walk means these price changes will uh, move or increase or decrease only based on the information. It cannot be predicted. It cannot rely on the past info. Huh? So in this bracket, random walk means the random component in the current period is unrelated to the random component of the past period. Means that, so the random walk is price of today is not related to the price of yesterday and price of today is not related to the price of tomorrow so the changes price of today is because it wants to change memang dia nak berubah memang ada movement sebab apa movement because of the information bukan sebab harga hari semalam ataupun bukan sebab harga hari esok huh? so hence random walk is uh, saying that price we cannot predict. Uh, we cannot predict from past prices. We cannot predict from past prices. Okay, uh, 3% is the uh, the group of citizens which um, violates uh, uh, the law of PKP. Uh, so that means we have to reject a hypothesis saying that uh, uh, all Malaysians are following the rule under PKP stay at home. Okay, because there is some people who are uh, violate the law. All right. Uh, so the definition or premise of EMH. Eh? So you must get that. Eh? Yang penting here is prices change because of information. Prices change because of information.